Connie from The Painter Photographer. Do you like regular pumpkin or cottage core pumpkin? Which is your fancy? This is part of a collaboration with the Jamie Ray Vintage Friends and I'm so excited to be here today and share with you this cottage core pumpkin painting. I'm gonna teach you how to paint this pumpkin. It's so cottage core, it's the pumpkin. Plus I added all the greenery right down here below which makes it cottage core. Are you into cottage core decorating? All of my friends are. So please watch the playlist below and give them all some love. Subscribe, like, share these videos. We really appreciate it. Hey everyone, I'm Connie from The Paint Photographer and I'm here today to paint a pumpkin with you. I've taught so many people how to paint these pumpkins. I taught them on Facebook, on the DIY paint page, and so many people have been able to do it. So I just feel like these are really fun to paint, especially this time of year. And uh, you can follow my instructions and get some pretty good results. So I'm gonna use all DIY paint today. The background, I'm going to choose water lily and a little beadboard. I'm gonna make these a little bit more textured than I normally do with the background. So I'm gonna include that in my process here today because normally I would just paint the board and it'd be a flat one coat paint and you can do that on your own. But today I'm gonna to teach you a little bit more texture and how to achieve that multiple look on the background. So I'm gonna flip you down and we're gonna start from here. I have a Lazy Susan under here. If you don't have a Lazy Susan, you really should get one. They're pretty amazing. I'm just gonna take a large brush. This is an artist brush. It's probably about a half an inch. And I'm gonna go ahead and what you should do is you always should pour your paint onto something else. There's a clear mylar down here. So I'm gonna pour out some of that water lily. And why you wanna do that is because you don't wanna contaminate your jar. That'll give you a stinky, sometimes people have trouble with mold and that's from contaminating it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hang on to the edge of my Lazy Susan here so it doesn't turn on me a lot. And I'm gonna just go and paint that water lily on. This is a board, a recycled board that I got from a carpenter. He put some trim boards on a business, I believe is what he was doing. And he had leftover boards and he brought them to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint the edges of it. It's not as important to get the edges. You can stain those. You can paint them a different color, but I like them all the same color. So I'm just going on and I'm painting a one solid coat with this water lily. The water lily, it covers extremely well. So basically you only need one coat, but as I said before, we're gonna add some texture on here. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of the beadboard. It's almost gone, so I need to get it out of the container with a spatula. So I put a little bit of that on my Mylar. Again, you don't wanna work out of your jars. And then I have this new silicone pack from IOD. These are amazing when you want to paint a flat surface and get some texture. They're, and they're easy cleanup. Like you can even do it with a baby wipe. You can't clean this with a baby wipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my squeegee, my silicone blade into that. And I'm gonna go ahead and add on that texture. And again, it skips. You can make it skip or be a solid coverage, whatever you want. So this is just adding a little bit of interest to that background. I don't like this straight edge right here, so I'm just going to try and clean that up. I wanna use water lily in my pumpkin Oops, I have a couple chunks so you can see they made streaks. So I'm gonna get rid of those chunks on my blade. I must still have one there. I see it right there. Sometimes your paint has little chunks in it and that will make that hard 
line with your squeegee. So you can just manipulate it however you want. I, I like the color black look, and I also don't mind some of those hard lines in there. I'm gonna add a little bit more beadboard up here. This is adding some really nice texture, which will make your pumpkin look much better than just being on a solid surface. This one is just on a solid surface. I also did these on a dark background. This is Bohemian Blue. This is Water Lily, and this one I did on Faded Burlap, so it's got a light background. So you can see the difference. We have the two blue pumpkins. You can see the difference in how they look just by what background you put on them. Now, you watched me paint those with this paint blade and I'll show you how easy it is to wash off. So this is green, white, yellow, all of them mixed together. While you're using it to paint with, you can just take it and scrape it on your project and clean most of that color off. So you don't, it's not, it's not hard to clean. So then I take a baby wipe, just a regular old Walmart baby wipe and wipe it off. Perfect. Isn't that sweet to clean up? If you're interested in this paint blade set, they are listed on my website. You will not be disappointed. They are fun. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw out this pumpkin. So here's my textured surface. You can decide which way you want to have your texture. This, I'm gonna bring it up for you. It's got a lot of crisscrossy textures and I like it. This pumpkin is gonna bo be bohemian blue with some blue iris and some water lily. So it's, it's, playing, it's staying in that blue family. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and draw out the shape of this pumpkin. So the first thing that you can do is draw out this oval right here. So a pumpkin's always got this big round oval in the front. And then you're gonna go in with a C and another C. And then you're gonna, the stem is gonna be in here. So we're just gonna make this stem right here. And then the back C is gonna start behind the stem here and come down and the same with this one. Okay, so that comes up like that. This stem might come out here just a little bit more. You can make some little C's in the back going on the back side of that stem. I don't like to waste paint, so I'm gonna take it right off my paint spatula. So I got little waste. And then we're gonna go in and paint really this big loop that we got right here. So your pencil lines, you can go outside your pencil lines. You don't have to stay in them. That was basically just a reference to where your pumpkin, how it was going to be drawn. Now I'm gonna skip and go back here to this one. I'm skipping that first one section of that pumpkin. And then I'm gonna skip this section of the pumpkin as well, right over to this side. So painting is just all about shapes. So right now you're making a C shape. 
Now, while this paint is wet, I'm gonna go in with Water Lily. I'm gonna go in with the same paintbrush. And I'm gonna fill in right here. So that's just going to be a different, a lighter color. It's got the Bohemian Blue and the Water Lily blended together. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit on the back side. That's why this Lazy Susan works so well. It just turns. I'm gonna get a long rounded brush and I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to some blue iris. Got all kinds of blues we're going here. So we're gonna leave some of that bohemian blue poking through, especially on the edges. And we're gonna brighten this pumpkin up just a bit. So I'm taking blue iris and a little bit of that prom queen. And letting a peak of that bohemian blue peek out there. Same thing on this one. What you're doing is you're you're filling those layers in so layers of paint is what tr brings interest so you start out with the dark colors underneath and then you fill on top with the brighter colors that you want your pumpkin to be so those dark colors are just under there for shadows That's brightening that pumpkin up really well. We're gonna go and fix this one now with a little bit smaller brush. Same on this side. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water lily. Just so you can distinguish from one slice of that pumpkin to the other. Nothing has to be real perfect. Now we're gonna go in with the water lily on this front lobe here. And bringing that highlight out. We have to let this dry for a little bit because we're really muddy in our colors. So I'm just gonna lighten it up a bit and we're gonna let it dry. DIY paint dries really quickly, but sometimes when you're going over the top of it, you don't want it to muddy. And if it is too wet, it's just gonna muddy. So we're gonna let that dry and we're gonna switch to the stem. The stem is layered chocolate. We're going in with this small little brush, this small little artist brush again, and up making that stem. He's gonna come right down there in the bottom. My layered chocolate got away on me, so we're gonna make that stem just a bit bigger. And I'm gonna make it twist. How you can make it twist like this is just pick up on your brush so that only the tip of it is hitting it. Sometimes you have to water down your paint. I'm gonna get my sprayer. If you give your paint just a small little mist, it'll water it down and it'll help it flow just a little bit better. Pick up. Now this stem looks a little goofy. We're gonna fix it down here on this bottom side. And we need some white. We're highlighting one side of that stem to give it a little dimension. I'm 
and pulling it into the pumpkin. Stem got a little bit of rounded right there because I dropped some paint. It's okay. We just work with whatever happens. All right, this is dry, looks pretty cool already, but I don't like that big bump on that stem, so we're gonna fix it. It's just paint. So we're gonna go in with an angled brush and cover that up. Because we already have white right here. So looks better already. Fixed it. The pumpkin is dry. So we're gonna go in with a few of those brighter colors that I was saying. So we have blue iris that I wanted to be the main of this. So I'm gonna go in here with blue iris, leaving some of those shades there. And see how my brush is running out of paint? I'm letting it run out. Down here, I think I want some more blue color. Then I'm going to add a little bit of white in with this and really brighten it up. I like to clean all the paint off my brush because it adds a little bit of interest to your painting. So clean it all off.
We're going to hit the top of this first section with this blue iris. And then I'm going to take a little water lily, which is the background, and go over that as well. And then a little bit of white. A little bit more of blue iris. Bringing that blue back in that pumpkin. Now I have to let that, that front section dry a little bit so that I can bring out a little bit more white. So this one's pretty cool too. You can really see that this has got some depth to it because of this darker orange in here. Now we're gonna go in with Firestarter and brighten this one up. You wanna be careful not to go over that darkness that made it have some depth to it. Now I do want a little white. I just like the what white does when it blends into the colors. It just adds some nice highlight to it, but doesn't give it a white look. Not yet. We will add a white look to it, but this, it's a dirty white. Because the white is mixing in with the wet orange. If you want the white to be white, you have to not have it mix in with the, you have to have your paint dry. Going back in with some fire starter over top of that white, which really brightens it up. Makes that pumpkin just pop with orange. This is the blue iris one. It's not quite dry, but we're gonna go in with the white anyway. I'm gonna grab a bigger brush. I grabbed a nice angled brush so I can get a really nice highlight right here. Now this is white, not bluish white, it's white. I'm gonna turn this around because the highlights are now hitting over here. And then you're also gonna have a little bit of that stem highlighting. We'll just add that in there, kind of like dry brushing it in. So there's that pumpkin. This orange as well, we're gonna add a little bit of white. We're gonna go in with some aviary. making a leaf look, kind of like a fern, if you will. Now I'm gonna go in with a little beadboard and brighten them up. Take some of this little black dress and outline these leaves, giving them a stem to be crawling on. Now I'm just going to add some squiggles coming out here. This one is 
happens to be sitting in. Just a pile of leaves. I see an opportunity for leaves right there. And then filling them in. making some squiggles out here. Pumpkins are known for their little squiggles. I'm gonna go behind the stem and then I'm gonna come up and make a little goofy thing there. I'm also going to come around here and squiggle that right up there. You always have to make sure that you sign your artwork. So mine goes right down there on the bottom right. I don't know why, but just does. I seal the pumpkins using DIY Big Top, and you don't want to use it straight out of the jar, so I pour mine into a separate container that I have specially for Big Top. I labeled the container Dirty Big Top. So I just go over the entire painting, and you can see how the colors get so bright with this going over with Big Top. After Big Top dries, sand the edges because you want that raw wood sticking out. Using the DIY clear wax, go over the entire thing. This will help protect for the dark. Now you're going to darken up those raw edges of the wood with the DIY dark wax, putting it all over the edges and then taking a soft cloth and buffing it off. Thanks for joining me. I hope that you can paint your own pumpkins a little cottage core. Click on the playlist below and find out what all my other friends have in store for you today. They all have fantastic ideas and their channels are great. So please give them some love. Thanks for joining me. You can find my products at thepaintedphotographer.com. Any DIY paint, these two paintings I'll post there and you can purchase them. I'll ship them right to your front door along with the paint and IOD products that you might need for your next project. And until next time, happy painting.